Ladies and gentlemen, the ratepayers are revolting. And that's a good thing. So for some time, people have been asking, how long is it going to be till South Africans boycott their taxes, stop paying their municipal rates, and basically tell their local municipalities to do one? Especially given prices go up everywhere, and unfortunately, service delivery seems to be lacking in many parts of the country. And there's no city that embodies this greater than Durban, also known as Etiquini. So Durban is a complete shithole, as we all know. But the Westfall Ratepayers Association have taken the stand. And what they said is they are paying all their rates into a trust account, and they are going to be controlling that trust account. They are not paying any rates to the city of Durban until Durban, well, just starts fixing stuff. It's something that we have said before on this particular show about how to do tax and rates boycotts. And it looks like the Westville Ratepayers Association is plowing the road ahead so that all of us can partake in this. So ladies and gentlemen, you may be saying, but that's illegal. Surely if you stop paying your taxes, you're going to get sent to prison. Well, maybe they'll expropriate your house. Well, according to the Ratepayers Association, Everything that they're doing is 100% legal. They're following the law. They're complying with their legal requirements. So according to Assad Gaffar, who is the head of the Westville Ratepayers Association, if the city of Durban does cut off anyone participating in the boycott, that disconnection is actually illegal because A, it infringes on the human rights of those particular people, but B, most importantly, this is a dispute with the city. You can't cut off people if there is a dispute in place at that very moment. So what he is saying is that, well, more people should actually boycott because the rates fund is also going to protect people who are being disconnected with legal fees as well. So at the end of the day, you got this loop where you're not paying rates, you're holding a boycott, and your fellow boycotters are going to protect you in court if the city decides to hang you out to dry. It's brilliant. We need more of this. Basically, it's just you and all your mates saying, let's not pay anything. And if they say, why aren't you paying? You go, well, because we're all in dispute. If we're all in dispute, can't cut our services off because we're all disputing what you're doing. Now, let's actually look at the city of Durban. city of Durban, obviously being a ANC, EFF coalition, we can all see how that's working out. Those individuals have recently found that there are large sums of money that has disappeared from the municipal accounts. The Auditor General's been in there and they've even said, wow, there's a lot of funds missing here. Wonder where they all went. Now the problem becomes in that the city itself now has a number of failing infrastructure points. Noticeably, we all know that there is sewage in the beaches. There's a number of services that aren't being delivered as the province as a whole has been subjected to many weather type related incidents. Least we forget that we had the mostly peaceful protests and we've also had the flooding in that area, possibly now twice. The problem is the city's not fixing any of the damages and the damaged infrastructure is getting worse. But the ratepayers are having to pay more and more funds to upkeep the lavish lifestyles of the politicians that are there. And unfortunately, it does get to a point where you just go, well, what the hell am I paying for? I can't just keep paying for your new car and for you to be chauffeured around in the style. You know, at least give me a beach I can swim in. And unfortunately, these municipal workers say, no, we don't want to. And we want to do less for you. And so the ratepayers have basically said, well, if that's the case, we ain't paying you. Because what the ratepayers also say is that we're going to pay the, our monies into this trust account. And we're going to be using that money to, well, do the work that the city is supposed to do. So we are going to fix the roads. We are going to fix the sewage systems. We are going to fix the lights and the potholes and all the rest of it. Essentially, you're taking the middleman out of the equation. And the ratepayers themselves are doing the actual work to fix their suburbs and their towns and their cities. And it's not just the Westville Ratepayers Association. So now you've got all the towns around that area who are joining in on the board cart as well. This is just the beginning of something really, really important. If you cut out the political parasites that are causing us all this misery, you keep the money for yourself and you use it for yourself, you can actually make a tangible difference in the way you live. Why isn't everyone else in this country doing exactly the same thing? Well, Ramon, the answer to that is actually very easy, and that is because the vast majority of individuals think that if they do something like this, that would be illegal. They'd probably lose their house. I mean, why wouldn't they? I mean, that's the fear, right? Follow the rules or you're going to get slapped. Well, it turns out that these ratepayers don't believe that. They actually figured that, you know what, we'd rather actually take the money and use it for the actual infrastructure as opposed to service. 
because that's constitutionally what they're meant to do. And so I would say that this rate payers association is actually providing a model for many people to follow. So the city, of course, is very unhappy about this. They are saying that these residents are engaging in mob mentality. That's rich coming from a politician. And further, engaging in unlawful acts. And, you know, the poor people who survive on grants and all that are going to be missing out. And the city desperately needs that money to pay off for their future voters. But thankfully, the rate payers are saying, food sack, and they are not going to pay it. Very interesting. I wonder if this could create legal precedent in time to come, where basically the court will say, we know what the rules say. But the more you follow the rules, the more the dignity of the residents actually suffer. So in this regard, we're going to look at what is in the best interest of the South African citizen. And if you can have a legal jurisprudence that changes that dynamic and changes the rules around legal jurisprudence, this could be the start of something really, really crazily effective. I can't wait.